Thank you, Tzvi. Uh, when uh, Tzvi was talking about the fish, uh, in the, the UV irradiated fish, it reminded me something. There is a story on uh, someone who, let us say, got out of the army and he wants to start his life. And he meets a friend of his and his friend says, what do you think uh, you are going to do now? He said, I'm going, I think I'm going to start a chicken farm. Okay, so he will start a chicken farm. After a while, they meet again, and his friend asks him, well, how does it go with the chicken farm? He says, well, not so good, not so good. He says, why not uh, so good? He says, well, because all of my chicken have died. He says, oh, that, you see why I was reminded, because of the fish in that tank. He says, oh, do you have any idea why? He says, no, but I, I'm not sure, but maybe it's because I planted them head down. Okay, uh, I hope this was not the case with the UV radiation. Uh, the next talk is by uh, someone who was uh, the first uh, to combine the Dead Sea with love. And uh, because Ahava in Hebrew is love. And uh, this is uh, Dr. Uh, Zev Maor, uh, who will uh, talk about dead, ski dead Sea skin research, new findings in treatments and products. Hello, uh, I'm very, very excited to be here in this historical moment. Uh, and I will try to share with you a little bit about what we are doing. Uh, we're coming from a company named Ava Love that had taken the, the mission to take the beautiful ingredient from this very uh, special place and share it with the world, formulated, marketed worldwide. Uh, by the way, you are all welcome to visit us at Ava Laboratories here and at the factory as well. Uh, let's go. No. Okay. No. Okay, so when we are going to the Dead Sea and looking for things to take with us, to formulate, actually we find three basic mineral resources, and these are the black mineral mud. Uh, I really rec recommend you to put on your body uh, later on. The bath salts and the Dead Sea brine waters. Uh, this is very salted water. And specifically, we take the osmoter, which we shall speak about it. The Dead Sea water is indeed very, very uh, special. It's saturated, more than 32% of dissolved salts, very dense. This is why you float when you go to the water. And it's very rich in magnesium and calcium. Uh, and when we are going to our specific combination, we are speaking about high concentration naturally formed by solar evaporation, and which is very, very rich in magnesium and calcium, which are bivalent cations, uh, in relation to sodium, potassium, uh, which are monovalent. And to our best understanding, it is very important for skin to have more bivalent cations in the uh, blend. Uh, so what is so special? How these minerals affect skin health and beauty? This is a small, simple question. Uh, this is the only question that we are asking ourselves already 30 years. Every morning, we go to the laboratory trying to ask ourselves, try to understand more. And thanks to the Dead Sea, we have surprising answers. And here, we are, and we shall a little bit describe the methodology that we have developed in these three, 30 years, how we take uh, with scientific tools, how we take the minerals to products. So it always start with idea. It's always start with someone read something, 
from science, someone raised an idea, but it always moves to the skin laboratory because this is the heart where we do the test, where we take the things, we, we do epigenetic test, uh, proteins, enzymatic, and if we're lucky, and sometimes we are, we find something that is breakthrough, and then it goes to patent, then it goes to publication, uh, and of course, for product development. And if it's product development, that's a big story from initiation, formulation, scale up, marketing, all the things that you know. But this only when we are lucky and find something interesting. Going deep, deeper to the laboratory, what we're doing, we have our own methodology. The methodology that starts with cell culture, and uh, you can see the keratinocytes, and Sorry, no light. And, oh, okay, sorry. These are the keratinocyte. Then you have the, the 3D reconstructed skin models. Uh, what we are very proud is our human skin ex vivo organ culture model, uh, donated from plastic surgery, aesthetic surgery. Last but not least, it always finalized with clinicals, with volunteers. So, uh, you have already watched it a little bit. Uh, we have developed a methodology how we can take a, a human skin, a real skin, and you c we can have it uh, in petri dish grown, exposed to different condition, split, epidermis and dermis, etc. It all started uh, from the university, uh, and then this guy, Professor Yoram Milner, had, he, he had passed away a couple of years ago. He was my uh, PhD uh, supervisor, visor, uh, and the first laboratory was built in Engedi. It's a collaboration with the uh, Arava Dead Sea Science Center uh, with the support of Arava, and the rest is history. Last year, uh, we moved here. We are very, very happy to uh, work from this side. Okay, I guess you, you know that uh, in 30 years we, we have uh, done some work, um, and I'm not going to speak much about it, about the skin moisturizing effect uh, of the osmote, uh, about the skin smoothing anti-wrinkle effect, uh, the reverse uh, senescence biomarkers, and the attenuation of UVB uh, apoptotic uh, via the exposure to osmote. This all was published, uh, and it is there, but uh, here I am to share with you only the new results, new findings, and I can tell you that some of the results would be described here at the first time. Um, speaking about skin, uh, you know, skin is a barrier. Skin is between us and the world. So, Barrier functioning is very, very important, and we wonder how the, the minerals, how the Dead Sea water is affecting the skin barrier functioning. So we looked for some molecules that represent the barrier functioning, more specifically filigrine transglutaminase 1 and involucrine. Uh, here you can see uh, a skin model uh, when it is exposed uh, with to, to a smoter, and you can see that there is much more green light, and this is a filigree and pro green. You have red light, which is transglutamine as well, one. Uh, additional uh, marker is the involucrine. You can see that there is better organization of the involucrine, uh, which means that the barrier functioning is improved. Um, one thing that uh, you may know, we are all exposed to irritation, to stressor all the time. It can be oxidative stressor, UV, pollution, different things that attack our skin. So skin irritation is part of our normal life. So we wonder how these minerals, when, the, you, when you put on skin, topically apply, could help to, to cope with the, with the irritation normally uh, attack. So we have built our skin model. So you can see the model here is a skin, and when we uh, 
create some irritation with a detergent, strong detergent, 15 minutes with 10% SDS, sodium dedosyl sulfate. It's really create irritation. And we add the osmoter to see whether there is any influence of the, of the um, cupping with the irritation. And here are the results. You can see that, indeed, when you uh, expose skin to SDS, the, uh, the viability, as expressed by uh, mitochondrial, is reduced dramatically. But when you add the osmoter in low concentration, like you have in, uh, in our product, the, the viability uh, is attenuated, is, is kept high. Um, interleukin, it's a cytokine, interleukin 1 alpha, is a cytokine that uh, expressed uh, ir the irritation uh, response. Uh, and again, you can see, if you expose sk uh, skin to uh, detergent, there is upregulation of the, of the cytokine. This upregulation is dramatically attenuated when you first put the osmoter. Okay, so we, uh, we, we did it uh, also with prostaglandin and other biomarkers that also express irritation. And again, you can see that osmoter really uh, balance against the upregulation of the prostaglandin. Um, but what about inflammation? You know that there is an, another machinery of inflammation. So we've built another model, and this model, uh, we put the osmoter first and then uh, exposes to, to lipopolysaccharide from, from alga to see whether usually it should create inflammation. Um, and these are the results. Indeed, whenever you expose the skin to SDS, to, to LPS, then it's upregulation of interleukin 1 beta, which is a known uh, ma marker of uh, inflammatory, uh, but this is upregulation is balanced, dramatically attenuated when the skin is exposed first to our osmet osmoter. Um, we wonder how this uh, machinery works, how we can protect the skin, and one of the thoughts was maybe hyaluronic acid. It's a molecule that is very important on barrier functioning, on moisturization of skin. Uh, so we expose the skin to a smoter and then measure the hyaluronic acid. Uh, what we have seen, both in, de in epidermis and dermis, upregulated of the uh, hyaluronic acid within the skin. Uh, there is another molecule that is very interesting uh, for us. It's uh, called beta endorphin, the molecule of happiness. I guess you know in the nerves when you're happy, when you running, uh, you, you have beta endorphin, uh, and what we, we heard that uh, beta endorphin is expressed also in skin cells, and we wonder how the osmoter, how the minerals affect the expression of the beta endorphin. So uh, we have built our skin models, exposed the skin to the osmoter, and measure the content of beta endorphin. And um, surprisingly, we found, and this was never published yet, uh, that when the skin is exposed to a smoter, there is upregulation of beta endorphin, and beta endorphin is involved in happiness, but also in balance of skin uh, with skin metabolism. Um, last but not least is, is a machinery called NRF2. Uh, NRF2 is a surviving machine, uh, machinery, anti-stress. Um, so uh, usually, you know, uh, what we try to prove that the osmoter, when uh, it affects the NRF2, there is a translocation to nucleus of the NRF2, and this translocation leads to expression of phase two enzymes uh, and antioxidant protein, which are very important for, for the survival. And this work was done by uh, Professor Roni Cohen uh, and his student draw from AVA. Uh, uh, here, for example, you can see that there is a translocation of, of NRF2 following exposure to osmoter for six, six hours. Uh, 
to, trying to sum up what we have found lately, first we find that the minerals of the Dead Sea are very special. It enhances the skin barrier functioning as measured by transglutaminase, filagrin, and volocrine. Uh, we have proven that it reduces the skin irritation uh, via uh, better cell viability, attenuating the interleukin 1 alpha and prostaglandin biomarkers. It protects against skin inflammatory machinery by attenuating the, the biomarkers involved, uh, interleukin 1 beta. Uh, it also enhances skin moisturization and barrier functioning via hyaluronic acid uh, upregulation. Uh, and it works uh, to help the skin to cope with stress via the NRF2 anti-stress and surviving machinery, and somehow balancing and calming via the metabolic uh, beta endorphin. So this what was found in our late researches, and uh, from these researches, how we translate it to products. It's a big question. I won't go through it now. I can tell you that we are working hard to personalize skin treatment that will analyze specific skin needs and answer with specific products. We are developing responsive cosmetics that release a specific molecule on specific skin condition. And I shall be very happy uh, to share it with you on the next uh, meeting. This is part of the team. You can see uh, Dr. Mital. Portugal that managing the research team, Dror that I told you with the NRF2, uh, Elirani Shalom is doing part of uh, the work here, uh, etc. So, and all the others, uh, Yara, here she is. So, thank you very, very much.